Hello everyone, and welcome back to Flag Football Fridays. This is week two, where we want to teach you the basics of flag football. My name is Matt Holmquist. I'm the coordinator for sport programs at the University of Texas at Arlington. So let's review what we talked about last week. Our focus in this presentation is going to be seven on seven flag football, and a variation of that being co-rec flag football played eight on eight, which is very similar. We learned that flag football is broken up into series of plays called downs. You get four downs to reach a line to gain. Lines of gains are spaced out every 20 yards on our flag football field. And if you fail to reach that line to gain within four downs, the other team gets the ball. The team with the ball has possession. And if we have a change of possession without a score, we call it a turnover. Here is our field just to review. We have line to gains, we have the end zone, we have the sideline out of bounds, and we also have our football right here. We have the two cones. The offense is going to stay behind this cone. Defense is going to stay behind this cone. And the offense is going to be going this way. There's our line to gain. Federal agents don't learn to spot counterfeit money by studying counterfeits. They study genuine bills until they master the look of the real thing. Then when they see bogus money, they can recognize it. In this way, many times we focus so much on the fouls that teams commit without enough time spent on what they can do. I have found this is a simpler way of learning the game than trying to immediately memorize everything that the teams can't do. So let's focus this week in week two. What can each team do? For the offense, remember, they can pass it, which is throwing the ball forward. They have to be behind the line of scrimmage, which is that offensive cone, and they only get one forward pass per down. The player who catches a forward pass is called a receiver. So what we're going to have most times in seven on seven flag football is one quarterback and many receivers. All the players are going to go out. They're going to try to catch a forward pass from the quarterback. That quarterback again must be behind the line of scrimmage. Run the ball. The quarterback can take the snap and run the ball or they can hand it off to a teammate. You can hand the ball off an unlimited amount of times behind or in advance of the line of scrimmage. 90% of the plays will have one or maybe two of these elements in them. You're gonna have a simple run, you're gonna have a simple pass, and then a run. This is what you're gonna see most of the time. What can the defense do? The defense can pull the flags of the ball carrier, but not before they have the ball. If they pull the flags of an opponent before they have the ball, it's a foul. We'll talk about fouls later, but remember, you can only pull the flags of an opponent if they have the ball. The defense can run across the line of scrimmage to try to deflag the quarterback before he releases a pass. And the defense can also guard receivers so that the quarterback can't throw them the ball. If the quarterback can't throw them the ball, he has to hold on to it longer. He can run for potentially a shorter gain, or he'll get deflagged by one of the defense's teammates. The defense can also intercept a pass. This is when the quarterback throws a forward pass and the defense catches it, not the offense. To combat this, the offense can prevent the defense from rushing. We call this blocking. It's done without hands, so sometimes we use the term shadow blocking. Uh, we don't want any contact on this blocking. I'll show you some examples of that in a video a little bit later. The receivers on offense can run different routes to try to create space between them and the defense. If the receivers don't have any defenders close to them, we call them open, and then the quarterback will throw them the ball, try to get some positive yards. Remember, no contact. Receivers can't push the defense away from them, and the blockers cannot push the defense or use their hands to try to prevent them from getting to the quarterback. Wanted to give you guys a little bit different footage from a different game. Again, this is at our National Flag Football Tournament. This quarterback is going to be sacked. So the defense can rush. Quarterback doesn't get rid of the ball in time. His flags get pulled before he throws the ball. Because he had the ball in his possession when the flags were pulled, this is a sack. The offense will be, it'll be the next down at this point where the flag was pulled. So remember, one of the things the offense can do is throw a forward pass. And the requirements for that is that we are behind this line of scrimmage. This orange cone delineates where the offense can be. The yellow cone delineates where the defense can be. As long as the offense is behind this, 
that can throw one forward pass per down. This is going to be a simple forward pass. Quarterback takes the snap, throws it, and it's caught. Okay, this is for a try. This is the signal that the try is good. We're going to talk about that in a different session. Here is a really good example of what blocking looks like. Our offensive player here can move in front of the defense, but he cannot make contact. The defense also cannot make contact with the offense, but he can try to get around him to get to the quarterback. Quarterback snaps the ball, and you saw some blocking go on. Fantastic catch and a flagpole. This is a great block right here. Offense is staying still, not using his hands. Defense is trying to get around him. Defense makes a diving save. Pulls the this is a really good example of a backward pass and then a forward pass. Remember, we can have one forward pass per down that must be behind the line of scrimmage, and we can have unlimited backward passes. This quarterback chooses to throw a backward pass, and then we can throw a forward pass. It falls incomplete, but let's go back and take a look at this. The quarterback throws the ball from here, teammate catches it back here. So that's a backward pass. We will go over signals that the officials use later, but as you can see, this referee is giving the signal that the pass is backwards by a backwards punch. Then a legal forward pass. Even though it falls incomplete, everything in that play was legal. If that was first down, it is now going to be second down. So I wanted to show you an example of a backward pass. This is going to be a backward pass and then a forward pass. Remember, you can have one forward pass per down and unlimited backward passes. This player is the quarterback right here. He's going to receive the snap from the center. And then he's going to pitch it backwards to his friend over there. Friend throws it forward. Great catch. This is going to be another example of a backward pass. All right. Player has the ball. He's running. He can pitch it backward to his friend, and he just gets his flag pulled. So let's watch this in a little bit of slow-mo, all right? He pitches it backward, then we have a forward pass. Now let's say this player catches it, decides to run, does not get his flags pulled. He can pitch it backward again to any of his teammates as he's running but we have already had a forward pass. It was a legal forward pass because it was done from behind the line of scrimmage. This is gonna be a great example of an interception. The offense is going to throw a legal forward pass and the defense is going to catch that pass. That is called an interception and the defense will now become the offense. The green team will take over the ball. Good blocking here up front. Defense intercepts it, defense's flags are pulled, the play is over. It is now first down in this line to gain for this green team.